Hello, students of algebra. Uh, today we are talking about solving linear systems or systems of equations, and we are going to use the graphing method to do this. This is section 3.1. Let's first start with a bunch of vocab. Uh, what we are talking about is solving systems of linear equations. So what is a system of linear equations? Well, we are used to having an equation, something like y equals 2x minus 3. We're used to graphing this. And what we're saying when we graph it is every point along here makes this equation true. What a system of e linear equations is going to be is it's going to be two different equations. So one equation, two equation. All of this equations when graphed, would all their solutions would be along this line. The goal, right, we're trying to solve a system of equations. The goal is going to be to find where they intersect. Because that point is called the solution to the system of equations. It's the ordered pair, the x, y, comma pair, where both equations intersect, where both equations would be true. So our entire goal is going to be we're given two different equations and we find where they intersect. We're going to use graphing to do that today. Uh, all of the questions that I ask on quizzes or tests then ask you to classify them using some definitions. Uh, we call our system a consistent system if it has at least one solution. So one or more solutions. This here would be a consistent system because it has one intersection point. Not all systems of equations do have an intersection point though. And if it doesn't, we would call it an inconsistent system. Up next, we have independent systems, and independent systems have exactly one solution. This has exactly one solution right, right there. So we would call that system a consistent independent system. Both uh, terms are accurate. And then lastly, we have a dependent system, and dependent systems have infinite solutions. So let's go through these definitions with kind of an example here. Uh, this here would be a, an example of a one solution system, right? There's one intersection point. And actually, no matter where I put this, even if I put this way up here, uh, they would still intersect. It's not in our like frame of window here, but they would intersect out here somewhere, right? Somewhere out here. So this is uh, a system that has one solution. And the terms, like I said in the previous slide, that we would describe a system with one solution would be consistent, consistent, okay, pretend I spelled that right, and independent. Now this one here would be an example of a system that has no solution. And I can put, I can move this in a lot of different places, right, this line, and it would have no solutions because these are parallel lines. And we know that parallel lines uh, would go on forever and never intersect. The term that we have to describe a system that has no solution is called an inconsistent system. Inconsistent system. And then lastly, uh, this type of system has infinite solutions. And really what it is, is you graph them, and you graph the first line, and then you graph it again, and they're the exact same line. And in those scenarios, we call that a consistent, because consistent means it has a solution. This one does, it just has a lot more. Consistent, dependent system. So these are the three uh, different options. A system of linear equations can either have zero solution, like this one here, uh, one solution, or infinite solutions. It can never have two solutions. Okay, You cannot draw two straight lines and have them intersect in more than one spot, at least in this uh, type of problem. All right, so your guys' task is going to be, I'm going to give you two different equations and expect you to graph them. So uh, first here, uh, remember what I encourage you guys to do if it's in standard form. Standard form is AX plus BY equals C. What I've encouraged you guys to do is do a little T-chart with the zeros in the corners. This is called graphing using intercepts. So what you would do is you'd plug in zero for x, so then this would go away. 
and you would just solve 2y equals negative 4, uh, that would be negative 2. Then you're going to plug 0 in for y. You plug in 0 in for y. This goes away. You have 3x equals negative 4. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. You get negative 4 thirds, which is negative 1.3. So we have 0, negative 2. And we have negative 4 thirds, 0. That would be negative 1.3, 0 right there. So when we graph this, it would look like that. Now let's look at this one. This one's also in standard form, so I'm going to use the zeros in the corners trick. If you plug in 0 for x, this goes away, and you have 3y equals 1, divide by 3, divide by 3, y equals 1 third. Now I'm going to plug in 0 for y. This goes away, and you just get x is 1. So we have 0, 1 third. That's right about there, and then 1, 0. And then you're going to plot these looking for an intersection. And what it looks like is maybe negative 2 comma 1 is our intersection point. All of these are very simple to check and make sure that you guys have the right solution. I think it's negative 2, 1, but it's graphing, so it's going to be a little bit of a, an approximation. We should be able to take negative 2 and 1 and plug those in for x and y and verify that they're true. And it has to work for both of them. It can't just work for the 1, right? So negative 2, 1. If I plug in negative 2 here, I get negative 6. Switch to a marker here. Negative 6. Plug in 1 there, plus 2, that is negative 4. Now I'm going to plug in negative 2 here. Negative 2 plus, then plug in 1 for 3, 3, that is 1. And so negative 2, 1 is my solution. And if I had to label this using our terms, this is a consistent independent system. Let's do another one. Maybe pause it here, give it a try, see how you do. <laughs> if you're good at graphing, you should be good at this, right? Uh, it's not really that much different. Let's plug in zero in our corners. If you plug in zero for x, this goes away and you get negative eight. Now plug in zero for y, this goes away, you get one. Zero, negative eight down there and one zero is here it's really important that you guys draw straight lines here i know i have a little trick here that you guys don't have with the smart board and uh, the software but do your best because your answers will just be wrong if you don't have if you don't have a graph right zero zero plug in zero for x you get looks like negative eight plug in zero for y you get I'm going to have to erase this. Negative 16 thirds or negative 5.3. Negative 5.3, 0. So this one here, hopefully you guys already are seeing what the solution is going to be. We know where it intersects because it was in our table, 0, negative 8. Should work for both. And uh, once again, this, because it has one solution, is called a consistent independent system. We got a couple more examples here. Plug in zeros in the corners for the top one. Plug in zero for x, it goes away, you get four. Plug in zero for y, you get two. Plot those points, 0, 4, 2, 0, and then I would connect them. Now, this next one, I wouldn't use the graphing using intercepts method like this. This is in slope-intercept form. So you'd go up to positive 1, and then you'd go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. and what you're going to see here is that these are 
two parallel lines. Okay, uh, and parallel lines have no intersection. Therefore, they have no solution. And we call that an inconsistent system. Last one. Uh, looks fun. Uh, I'll pause it here. You guys give it a try. See how you do. Sorry, you pause it here, not me. Plug in zero for x. You get negative eight thirds. Negative eight thirds is negative two point six seven. Plug in zero for y. You get two. Let's go back and graph that. Zero negative two point six seven would be down here. And two zero would be over there. We'll connect them with our perfectly straight line. Remember, it has to be perfectly straight because you're using that to find where they intersect. And you should always be checking them if you do find an intersection point to make sure they actually work. Zero here, you get negative 16 over negative six, which is also negative 2.67. Then you plug in zero for y, this goes away and you get two. So we're gonna see our tables are exactly the same. We have the same line uh, and we have words, we have terms to describe this, right? Uh, consistent means it has a solution, at least one. And this is a solution everywhere along the line. I know my line is garbage, but we'll try again. So this one's solutions are everywhere along this line because they intersect everywhere along the line. Uh, consistent means it has at least one, and dependent means it has infinite. So consistent dependent means uh, an infinite solution problem. Uh, that's all I got for you guys today. This is section 3.1 on solving systems by graphing. Let me know if you have any questions.